You're watching the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, residents in Grove, Oklahoma were given quite the show yesterday when some amphibious planes decided to drop by. Melissa Alexa shares with us the excitement behind their arrival. Also, one of the best parts of fall is watching those leaves change colors. We're going to learn how this year's transition may look a little different. And we've got ourselves a somewhat fall-like day out there today. It's going to be breezy as well. A look at that forecast to get you out the door. It's coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 o'clock now on this Tuesday morning. It is October the 1st. Yes. And it's going to feel like oh, October yeah. for one whole day. I'll take it. No, I'll take you, it. You gotta, yeah. gotta do what you can. Now, yesterday <laughs> wasn't too bad, no, and it was a day. great day to head out and watch a fairly unique sight. Yes, well, residents of Grove, Oklahoma, had an opportunity to see amphibious planes land on the water yesterday. KOM's Melissa Alexis has more. This uh, event right here kind of blows my mind as as how it was. Uh, received in our community. Amphibious planes landing on Wolf Creek Park drew in a big crowd to the lake. In our community, uh, this was one of our biggest Facebook posts that we've ever done. Uh, just showed there's some, some uh, planes that's gonna land on the water. Not many people get to see a airplane land on water, so this is a very, very special event today. Not only to see one land, but we're gonna see 25 to 30 airplanes land. The Grove Convention and Tourism Bureau director was pleasantly surprised by how big a crowd the event brought out. And the guy just asked, hey, can, can a few planes fly in and land and, and eat on, the, on, uh, on land? So, uh, the, the cool thing is, is I see something big happening when you have this much of a turnout for something that wasn't supposed to really, I didn't know that it would be this big. The planes flew in from all over the U.S. and stopped to get a bite to eat at the food trucks by the lake. The guys are going to get out, they're going to have lunch and mingle with the uh, people that are here to see them land and just they're going to taxi up right here and we'll park them all the way down through here. The planes are part of an organization that decided to stop in Grove on the way to their national convention. Reporting in Grove, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. Now they hope to start doing this annually after seeing how many people came out to watch the planes landing. That was certainly a very unique yes. sight to see. You know, it's one thing to see a plane land, it's another thing to see them actually land on the water and then come right. up on the shore. It was a beautiful day out it's there. Lake's always was. beautiful, yeah. so I, I can see why there was such a great turnout. Oh yeah, great weather for that. Now it's going to be a little cooler mm. today, but it's going to be very fall like today as well and quite breezy. Let's start first though with a look outside from our camera downtown Pittsburgh. We're looking pretty good this morning. Couple clouds here and there, but otherwise not a bad start to the day. Same from our camera at 7th and range line in Joplin as well. And we'll head on down south to the Modoc camera 20th and range line looking back to the the south and again traffic is flowing and that's of course definitely a good thing as well and we're looking great traffic flowing as well from the KDOT camera 69 and East 520th Avenue just south of Pittsburgh future track today the big story is going to be the wind we're looking at a very fall like day but we're going to have north winds gusting 30 35 miles an hour and we're having we're going to have humidity levels drop significantly today as well so uh, that being said combined with the winds low humidity and severe drought conditions across a good portion of the area. No outdoor burning, no bonfires, even though it's going to be chilly and absolutely no discarding smoking materials or anything else out the window that could potentially start a fire. Outside of that, though, a couple of clouds this afternoon. We got a very beautiful day aside from that wind temperatures this morning. Now we're warmer than where we should be for this time of year by about 10 degrees, but thanks to a boundary that passed through not long ago in the winds, it's not going to warm up that much. 62 in Joplin, 64 in Pittsburgh and around the area. Temperatures looking pretty good. Uh, low mid 60s and some upper 60s out there as well. As we head through the rest of today, we're again looking at the winds. Now, that's the other thing. Winds are going to continue until the evening. It won't be until 5, 6 that they'll start to let up a bit. Temperatures, though, we should be at 75. We're looking to go right around the mid 70s out there today. Got a pretty cool night, just downright chilly night tonight night and then the heat returns. We'll go over those details with you in the full forecast and that's coming up here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right. Thanks, Chris. 
We have some breaking news out of the Middle East for you this morning. The Israel Defense Forces said it has started limited localized and targeted ground raids in Lebanon. Other raids targeted Hezbollah terrorist targets and infrastructure in southern Lebanese villages and started late last night. A footage released by the IDF shows members of its 98th Division preparing for the offensive. After operating in Gaza, where the soldiers of the 98th Division gained skills and operational experience, they moved north and are now conducting limited localized targeted operations that began last night. The IDF said authorities have filed formal charges against the man accused of setting up a hidden camera inside a girls locker room in the McDonald County High School in Anderson, Missouri. Now the suspect is 53 years old, Roger Copeland of Neosho. The camera was discovered in the locker room on Friday and authorities say Copeland was identified on his own camera footage. Now, according to law enforcement, Copeland admitted the camera was his after being brought into the sheriff's office and questioned. Now, he's charged with sexual exploitation of a minor, possession of child pornography and invasion of privacy of a victim less than 18 years of age. Well, a federal judge yesterday sentenced a Joplin man for stealing mail from Joplin residents as part of the conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud. Aaron Blake gets three years and seven months in federal prison without parole. The court also ordered Blake to pay more than $12,000 in restitution to his victims. Back in February, Blake pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit bank fraud and wire fraud one count of bank fraud and one count of aggravated identity theft. Blake's co-defendant Emily Annalee Sturgis pled guilty in July to conspiracy and fraud charges. Now, Sturgis and Blake stole mail from December 2022 to January 2023. The stolen mail included credit cards, debit cards, checks, cash, jewelry and documents that contained personal identifying information. They also used the stolen credit cards to unlawfully make purchases. Sturgis currently awaits sentencing. And Kansas Governor Laura Kelly moves to waive fees for child care licensing and background checks through 2025. Now, the governor's office yesterday announced the state of Kansas will cover the state licensing background checks as well as fingerprinting fees for child care providers. Now, fee coverages will assist new child care providers by reducing startup costs and continuing to support existing providers as they retain their licensure. Well, people always look forward to the fall colors across the Ozarks after we wrap up the summer season. But as Nick Kelly tells us, this year's colors might look a little different. Unlike our blistering hot summers we saw back in 2022 and 2023, this summer was kinder to the Ozarks. June was warmer than normal, followed by a below average July. While both months had above normal rainfall, we trended drier and warmer toward the end of the season. Kay Frazier, a nursery general manager, says that's playing a role in how the fall colors will change. If we have a moderate summer, we had a wet spring, we have a moderate summer, it's the amount of moisture in the soil does play a role in it. Frazier says it's not the only thing impacting the colors this year. Along with shorter daylight hours cutting off chlorophyll in the leaves, different soil moisture and minerals through the area will work with the pigments in the leaves to change colors. Based on how dry we've been getting since August, Frazier is expecting some changing color this season, some happening faster than others. So I think you're going to see spotty color. I think some areas will have more color than other areas are. Typically when we're really dry like we have been, often that makes the trees just start to change color and then they pretty quickly go to yellow and, and brown. For those in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas with just enough soil moisture to work with, you could see the peak of the color change by the week of October 28th. For the rest of the Ozarks, the peak should happen by the week of November 4th. No matter how the color comes and goes this season, Frisher wants everyone to take it in if they see it. If you're fortunate enough to find those photo picture perfect spots, then, then you're a lucky person and, and you've got to enjoy. That's what life's about. You've got to take the things that you can and enjoy them while they're there.
And those are our top news stories this half hour. Coming up next, representatives from the Labu Soul Medical Spa and Wellness Center are with us this morning with an opportunity to help those battling cancer. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Fredonia, Kansas for National Night Out. Well, welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. Well, October is a time for us to be reminded that the battle against cancer can be a long one. And with us this morning, we have Amy Ibsen and Samantha Ferguson from Labu Soul Medical Spa and Wellness Center with an opportunity for you to help those who find themselves on that road. Good morning to you both. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So talk to me about this cancer survivor restoration package that you guys are offering um, in the month of October as it is, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So um, we came into this with the, the thought that, you know, everybody knows somebody mm -hmm. that's been affected by cancer. And we wanted to put together a package that could really benefit those that have gone through oh, sure. cancer and treatment because we know the toll that those, mm -hmm. the, the disease and the treatments has on them. Um, you can have a lot of laxity, you know, volume yes. loss in your face and it can really, um, make you not feel good about yeah. yourself you know and so Absolutely. when you're done so we put this package together mm -hmm. that will help rejuvenate kind of help you look better feel better um just to give you a new lease on life as you step back into your new healthy uh journey mm -hmm. absolutely and then people can nominate a cancer survivor for this package can you talk to me a little bit about that process and where people can do so so the event that we're having next saturday on mm -hmm. the 12th um, we are going to draw uh, or choose from the contest sure. nominations um, who the winner is going to be. <clears throat> right now, they can go to our website or to our social media and find the information there to make the nominations. Fantastic. And talk to me a little bit more about this breast cancer fundraiser that you're having on October 12th and kind of just, you know, why it's important for community members to come to this and, and to really, you know, see your partnership with breast cancer survivors. I feel like um, we personally at our spa, we have a staff member there who she's a survivor of breast cancer. Yes. Um, I believe she's five years oh, since wow. her diagnosis. Um, so each year we try to get mm -hmm. together and we try to combine something and figure out what fundraiser we want to give to. Um, and with it being one of our own, we yes. decided this would be a really good benefit to you know help fundraise towards. And where will this fundraiser be held and what time as well? Um, it'll be held at our spa, Lobby Soul. Um, it's there in Joplin, um, and the time is from 10 to 2, 10 to 2 on yes. Saturday the 12th. Fantastic. And then you've also had some breast cancer survivors receive this package as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, how you've seen it help them and kind of, you know, restore mm -hmm. them, as you were saying earlier? Yeah, so, like, so we have services that can uh, really target some of the mm -hmm. areas that you know, like I said, the treatments sure. have caused um, laxity, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, filling your face, making it look more rejuvenated, making you feel healthy. And we've tried some of these treatments out and people have really, um, it's just boosted their yes. confidence and made them feel better mm -hmm. about their life journey. Incredible. Well, thank you guys so much for being with us this morning. And if you'd like more information, you can visit their website at labusouljoplin.com. Stick around. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 718 now on this Tuesday morning and we are starting with the future track. So we're going to have those gusty north winds today and that's going to bring in cooler air. We had a boundary pass through early this morning and that again is going to bring in that cooler air make things a little more fall like at least for one day out there. However, there's a catch with that wind. We have near severe drought conditions across the region. You don't want to be doing any outdoor burning, no discarding smoking materials, anything like that, because humidity levels are going to drop as we head into the uh, late morning and afternoon as well, making things drier than what they already are. So just be cautious, be smart out there. Outside of that, a very fall like day and the most fall like day we're going to have for a while, maybe a cloud or two this afternoon, and it won't be until later this evening that the winds will begin to ease up and it'll actually be a little bit on the chilly side going below normal tonight across the area. Then we'll have 
the winds turn around out of the south. They won't be as gusty tomorrow, but they will start to bring in temperatures back above normal by a few degrees. We should be right around the mid 70s and we are looking at these temperatures starting to climb back into the low 80s across the area. Then we'll head into our Thursday and winds will start picking up again still out of the south. So like today, gusting upwards 30 35 miles an hour. The only difference is they're coming from the south instead of the north. And of course, that means they're going to be bringing in even warmer temperatures across the area. But you know, the one thing that's lacking from the future track over the next couple of days, there's no precipitation out there, and that's not good because we need rain. We need it badly here, and we don't have any on the short term or the even some of the long term. It's not going to be a while. So we have the winds today again out of the north gusting 30 35 miles an hour and then later this evening they'll calm down. In fact, overnight we're looking at relatively calm winds across the area. Not too bad for our Wednesday. Well, that south breeze about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Then we go into early Thursday morning. We see those temperatures or temperatures. They see the winds rather begin to pick up once again and they'll be like today. As I mentioned earlier, gusting 30 35 miles an hour out there. Quick look outside our camera 7 and range line. Here comes the sun on a beautiful day. 62 in Joplin. North breeze at 8. Now the humidity is still at 58%. But as the morning progresses, that is going to begin to drop down into the 20 30% range at best across the area. We've got low mid and still some upper 60s out there this morning. So again, we're above average this morning. We should be low 50s. We're a bit above that right now. So again, as you saw in the temperature map, we have a 15 county area. These these are averages, but we're eventually very slowly. Take a look at how slowly these temperatures rise through the morning. So sunny skies, breezy, upper 60s by 11 o'clock. And again, that's ahead of highs today, right about where we should be going into the mid 70s out there. Breezy, couple of clouds possible this afternoon, otherwise sunny skies. Then we'll have clear skies heading into the evening without any cloud cover. You know, we've talked about how that acts as a thermal blanket. No blanket tonight. It's going to be chilly. It's probably going to be one of the coldest nights we've had in a while. Falling back into the mid to upper 40s. So that actually puts us upwards of 5 to 8 degrees below normal tonight. And then as I mentioned, though, it is short lived. We're talking almost a 40 degree turnaround on temperatures tomorrow as we go back into the low 80s. 90 by Thursday, pushing 90 Friday and Saturday. Sunny skies out there. Low 90s Sunday and Monday. Upper 80s heading into next week. And yeah, we I like sunny days. I like warm weather as much as the next person, but this is too hot for this time of year and we need some rain and there's not any on the horizon for us. That's a check of your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM morning news right after this. Welcome back. Charlene Patton from the Kansas Soybean Commission is with us this morning. She has another great recipe for us this time. A fall recipe. We're making candy <laughs> walnuts today. Perfect for the first day of October. Good morning. It Charlene. is. And thank you. Of and course. you're right with this being <laughs> fall. I thought we've got a theme going of yes. harvest for soybeans and mm -hmm. apples and this whole month with recipes. Yes. And I thought let's start out because this will be great on the salad. We're going to do actually next okay. week an apple yes. salad. I'm doing a walnuts here, but you could do a combination of pecan Cons, cashews, oh, soy sure. nuts. Yes. It's going to take about a pound. So you, I'll let you start. Okay. This is a cup of granulated sugar okay. and then just about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and I'll let you mix that. Okay. I have already beaten this till it was frothy here and that's one egg white and one tablespoon of water okay, you can see it. how that's just kind of bubbled and doesn't take very long to do and to that i'm going to then add our okay. nuts and again you could use a variety of nuts oh, for sure. this and we just want to coat those until they're all coated with that egg white and then you're going to okay. add your sugar Here and we go. You, yeah go ahead and add that in and we're just going to coat this this recipe is so easy to do and if you were to go buy these in the store they're going to be so much more expensive oh, aren't they oh, so yes. make them at home yourself and you'll have this and what a great recipe mm -hmm. to have not only for the salad that we're going to do next week but you could pack these up for a gift for the holidays oh how fun. it could be yes. another little gift for uh, halloween as well now i've got a parchment okay. lined paper here and we're just going to put that there 
and we'll get all that sugar out of there. And you just want to have a thin layer of that. Oh, just a little bit more in there. A thin layer that we're going to put across this. This is actually going to bake at 250 degrees for about 30 minutes and then uh, stir it after 15 minutes. Okay. If you want it a little crunchier, yes. then just go another 5, 15 more minutes. Ooh. Keep an eye on it. Absolutely, when it comes yeah. out, you'll break it apart. And if you wanted to chop it a little bit for salad rather than to have the... Uh, of walnut halves, yes. you could do that as well. But the Fantastic. recipe is on our website, right. and you'll probably have it on your website too. Absolutely, yes. Well, it looks absolutely amazing. It just reminds me of fall yes. and, and just how delicious that is. Well, if people want to find it, where, where can they go? They should go to kansassoybeans.org, or you can call our 800 number, 877-KS-SOYBEAN, and um, Megan will answer yes. the phone, and she'll send you all the recipes for October. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning, Charlene. Stick around. We're back with more right after this. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 730. I'm Elise Snowy. The Joplin and Reddings Mill first responders were called to a fire late last night. Around 1150 reports that a trailer at the Love's Travel Stop on Exit 4 along I-44 was on fire. Now the truck was hauling a full load of body glove energy drinks. The driver pulled the trailer to the front of the parking lot and unhooked the trailer as the flames began to overtake the trailer. The brakes are the main suspect of the cause at this time. The fire was under control in about 15 minutes, but the trailer and its load were destroyed. No one was injured. Well, authorities in Springfield have been answering reports of stolen campaign signs. Now, signs from multiple yards have come up missing. One couple has reported the theft of two signs. For one Springfield man, the theft was only part of the issue. I think we all should have an opportunity to have things in our yard that speak to other people um, no matter you know what side of the political spectrum that you're on. Well, both Democrat and Republican supporters have reported a reoccurring need for replacement signs. Campaign sign vandalism might also be a problem in southeast Kansas. We hope to have more on that this week. Well, a 250 ton piece of Southeast Kansas mining history will soon have a new home. Originally used to dig coal in Cherokee County, page 618 walking drag line will take up residence in the Miners Hall Museum. Now, the move was made possible by Tilson and Sons House Moving of Carthage. Now, they used the custom piece of steel to move the equipment the 30 odd miles. A huge boom was moved yesterday and to date the Wilkinsons now have donated three major pieces of Kansas mining equipment to area museums. I think it's important to preserve our mining history in our area and uh, we have a steam shovel that's located at the Crawford County Museum. Uh, we have a page 202 drag line. It's that big Brutus that we've donated and this one going to uh, the museum in Franklin. Well, uh, this kind of completes the whole uh, gamut of uh, mining equipment that our family use over the last 80 years. The drag line was purchased in 1953 by the Wilkinson Coal Company. Now here's Chris with a look at the forecast. Decent start to the day out there. We are looking at our camera downtown Pittsburgh. The sun very bright out there. There are no clouds to obscure it. Uh, we don't have those gusty winds just yet, but they are on the way. Uh, we'll take a look at our camera from 7th and Range Line. Also looking pretty good this morning as well. If you look, there's a couple of light clouds out there. Not much. Modoc camera 20th and Range Line looking back to the south. Also looking pretty good this morning with those clear skies and ample sunshine starting to peek through from the KDOT camera 69 East 520. Avenue just south of Pittsburgh. Future track 
for today. Not much to show other than maybe a passing cloud or two here or there. I'm of those gusty north winds out there pushing 30 35 miles an hour. So again, with a lot of the area in severe drought and the fact that our humidity levels will be dropping out there. No outdoor burning. Don't discard your smoking materials out the window or anything like that. Be smart. Be safe. You don't want to start some kind of big fire. That would be a problem for everyone. 62 in Joplin, 64 in Pittsburgh right now and around the region again. We are above normal for right now. Uh, some of us have fallen back though. Low 60s. We should be though in the low 50s. We got low mid and upper 60s out there this morning. We're going to have highs about average. It's a slow climb to about the mid 70s. Again, gusty winds through most of the day out of the north. So if you're traveling, Make sure you keep that in mind out there because they will not let up until we get into the evening hours and we'll have clear skies heading through the evening and a pretty chilly night ahead of us as well. We'll have another full look at your forecast here in just a few more minutes, Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. The tradition of the pinata dates back to the 14th century. We'll hear how one man is working to make Pinata creation of fine art. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Fredonia, Kansas for National Night Out. In Consumer Watch this morning, well, if you have federal student loans, you'll want to pay attention. Two key benefits expired yesterday. The federal government's fresh start and on ramp programs that help millions of student loan holders with missed late payments or defaulted on loans ended yesterday. The program helped borrowers avoid falling into delinquency or default and missed payments were not reported to credit bureaus. But now those penalties will return and if you can't make a payment at all, consider a deferment or forbearance option up to three years. Well, Ford adds a new incentive for potential electric vehicle customers. The automaker says it will add a free charging station with EV purchases as well as a complimentary in-home installation. EV owners who already have a home charger can get $2,000 cash instead. The offer starts today and lasts until the end of the year for any customers who buy or lease a new Ford EV. A potentially crippling strike by port workers started at midnight and consumers are bracing for the damage, which could top $5 billion a day. Fox News correspondent Brooke Taylor has more from Seabrook, Texas. Time is running out. A strike by tens of thousands of union dock workers across 36 ports from Maine to Texas will start at midnight unless a deal can be reached to raise wages and ban automation. The unions asked President Biden not to intervene, and so far he's keeping his distance. Mr. President, would you intervene in a dock worker strike if they go on strike on Tuesday? No. Why not? Because it's collective bargaining. I don't believe in tap harbor. The dock workers are asking for a 77% raise and a promise that cranes, gates, and container movements be monitored by humans, not AI. The USMX, representing a coalition of the biggest shippers, says those demands aren't practical and a strike will only raise prices for consumers. If we can't automate our ports, we'll continue to fall further and further behind. Our ports are less efficient than ports in third world nations like the Congo. Retailers are now scrambling to secure their supply lines ahead of the strike, which is expected to cost the economy $5 billion a day. Local officials are now urging folks to avoid panic buying, claiming there will be no shortage of essentials like food and medicine, and price gouging will not be tolerated. People do not need to rush out to the grocery store and stockpile goods like they did during the pandemic. I want to be very clear about that. And Fox is told for each day that these ports are closed, it's going to take four to six days to get operations running normally. In Seabrook, Texas, I'm Brooke Taylor, Fox News. And those are our top consumer stories. Let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell.
Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. It is now 743 on the dot on this Tuesday morning. We're going to start with the feature track, which doesn't have a lot to show, unfortunately, in terms of precipitation, because we do need rain around the area. But it is going to tell us about the gusty winds with those wind arrows moving a little fast out there. It'll be very breezy today, and we'll discuss those particulars here in just a moment. But it'll be a north wind thanks to a boundary that passed through early this morning. That's going to give us the most fall like day we're going to have for the foreseeable future today with temperatures right about where they should be. So even though we're starting out above normal, we'll be about normal later today. Tonight, though, it's going to be a bit on the chilly side out there, going about five to eight degrees below average. However, we're going to have a nearly 40 degree turnaround in temperatures as we go into Wednesday with the winds coming up out of the south. And they won't be as gusty as today, but they'll still be bringing in warmer air across the area, and that will continue into our Thursday. However, as we go into Thursday morning, starting from the west and eventually working across the area, those southerly winds will start to pick up out there and they're going to be gusting like today and that's going to bring in even warmer air with temperatures going 10 to 15 degrees above normal as we head into our Thursday. So are we talking about those winds? We're looking at 30 to 35 mile an hour wind gusts out of the north today. On average, we could see some as the uh, wind, uh, wind gust trackers showing that could be a bit higher than that, but about 30 to 35 mile an hour wind gusts out of the north and these will continue through about five, six o'clock this evening before winds will calm down and we're looking at relatively calm winds as we go into the overnight hours. Wednesday we'll have a southerly breeze about 5 to 10 and then by Thursday early morning again working from west to east we'll have another very breezy day but this time out of the south with winds gusting once again 30 to 35 miles an hour. So today and Thursday, if you're doing any traveling, especially on east west highways across the area, be aware uh, we've got some gusty winds on the way. We've got clear skies out there in Joplin right now, 62 degrees, north breeze at 8, humidity still at 58%, but as day goes on, that number is going to tank down into the say the 20% range at best out there for most of us. So with the dry conditions, Severe drought conditions across the area and gusty winds, no outdoor burning, please, and no discarding smoking materials or anything else that's flammable out your window. All right. Temperatures this morning, we've got a myriad all in the 60s, but low, mid and upper 60s across the area as we get this Tuesday underway. We'll eventually make for everybody averaging about the upper 60s by 11 o'clock. Sunny skies and breezy out there. And then, like I said, it's a slow warm. We'll only make it to about the mid 70s today, which is right where we should be for this time of year. Could have a couple of passing clouds this afternoon. Otherwise, just uh, sunny skies. It's going to be a beautiful fall day, excluding the wind out there. Clear skies continue through the evening. Again, those winds will calm down a bit, and we will be chilly tonight below average into the mid to upper 40s with those clear skies skies continuing and unfortunately while we need rain now I've, I've mentioned before you know I love sunny warm days as much as the next person but it is going to be too warm and too dry over the next several days so that's why this forecast is a little little distressing because we are in desperate need of rain and there's none out there the only thing we have is well above normal temperatures low 80s tomorrow 90 degree readings as we head toward the end of this week even low 90s by sunny by Sunday sunny skies maybe a few clouds Monday Monday, but still staying 10 to 15 degrees above normal and no rain chances over the next 10 days across the area. So a lot to contend with out there. That's a check of your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM morning news right after this. Well, it's an iconic symbol of Latino culture that has a long and fascinating history, deeply rooted in traditions that date back to the Aztec Empire. Now we're talking about a pinata. Luz Delia Cabarello shares how a California artist is transforming the way people see them. We're currently in my studio in El Sereno. It's coming along. What you're seeing is actually 14 years of work, close to 15 years. It's where Roberto Benavides' beautiful ideas come to life. So this is what it all starts with, the paper mache part. He gently makes strips of paper and a glue solution. And I just mix that with a little water and just dip these strips of paper in and cover the balloon. And this is only the beginning of a long process of making his version of a piñata. A uh, piñata is a cultural object. Uh, usually 
especially used in celebrations. A tradition that dates back to the 14th century. It's coming along, it's starting to look like a bird. The Aztecs traditionally honored their gods by filling a small feather-covered pot with treasures and hitting it until all the contents fell at the feet of a statue. With the metallic, it does take a little bit longer. So yes, these beautiful creations were essentially made to be smashed, but Benavides wants to expand the breadth of what a piñata can be. My goal was to push it out of the realm of only destruction to being preserved and actually admired and cared for in a long-term sense. And I've slowly developed a style where I use serrated fringe and use all acid-free materials just to make sure my pieces last for as long as they can. His creations becoming a symbol and celebration of Mexican culture, a sculpture, if you will, which is fitting given his artistic background. The fun aspect is figuring things out. So I didn't go to school for art. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I studied bronze casting. But Benavides happily traded bronze for paper mache and strips of glue-soaked paper because... I really liked the idea of highlighting the Mexican cultural object in the fine art world. It was more affordable and allowed him to show who he is with every design. I'm always Mexican, I'm always white, I'm always gay, whether you know it or not. So that's kind of the uh, identity that I push. As for whether these have any surprises inside. I do put stuff inside, but I don't talk about it. And it gives me the freedom to add something to a piece that may be m very personal for me that I don't want to share with everybody. This can be quite tedious, but it's always worth it. Those are incredible. They are. I mean, I know he's talking about preserving some of yes. them, but just to think, you know, I, I couldn't imagine actually smashing one of those. They're, they're just, they, they look fantastic. I don't know, you give a five-year-old kid with a baseball well, bat. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't do it, but yeah, a five-year-old kid with a baseball bat. I mean, turn one loose in here and see what they'll smash, too. It doesn't have to be a pinata. Oh. Uh, well, well, we know what we're doing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bring a bunch of yes. five-year-olds in here with bats. Uh, let's take a look at the future track real quick. We're going to talk about those winds today again out of the north gusting upwards of 30 to 35 miles an hour. And our temperatures though fall like could have a passing cloud or two this afternoon, but otherwise looking about the mid 70s for our highs. However, we're going to be below normal about five to eight degrees below normal tonight as we fall back into the 40s across the area. However, winds tomorrow will shift out of the south. They won't be gusty like today, but they will bring in some warmer air. It's going to put us just a bit above average, say five to eight degrees above normal as we see those temperatures climbing into the low 80s. Then as we head into early Thursday morning from west to east, those south winds will really start to pick up and they're going to bring in even warmer air across the area as we're looking at temperatures pushing around 90 degrees. We're going to have another look at your forecast plus the news you need to know right after this. Here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Authorities have filed formal charges against 53-year-old Roger Copeland for setting up a hidden camera inside a girl's locker room at the McDonald County High School in Anderson, Missouri. The camera was discovered in the locker room on Friday. He's charged with sexual exploitation of a minor, possession of child pornography, and invasion of privacy of a victim less than 18 years of age. A federal judge sentences Aaron Blake of Joplin for stealing mail from Joplin residents as part of a conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud. Now Blake receives three years and seven months in federal prison without parole. Blake's co-defendant Emily Annalee Sturgis pled guilty in July to conspiracy and fraud charges. Sturgis currently awaits sentencing. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly moves to waive fees for child care licensing and background checks through 2025. The state of Kansas will cover the state licensing, background checks, as well as fingerprinting fees for child care providers. The fee coverage will assist new child care providers by reducing startup costs and support existing providers as they retain their licensure. 
And we've got a near average day out there. Mid 70s today, maybe a couple of passing clouds this afternoon. North winds gusting 30 to 35 miles an hour. So do keep that in mind. No outdoor burning. Careful while you're driving as well. Winds calm down this evening. Clear skies overnight and chilly below normal. Mid upper 40s. Doesn't last though. Low 80s tomorrow. 90 by Thursday and breezy again, but this time out of the south at 30 to 35 miles an hour. And unseasonably hot weather continues through the weekend and next week. Alrighty. Well, children at a Spanish hospital were visited by a famous pirate last week. Hollywood star Johnny Depp and Jack Sparrow of Pirates of the Caribbean. Garp surprises the kids at the hospital in San Sebastian. The flamboyant pirate got smiles from the children, joking about his lack of teeth and pretending to break wind to del the delight of his young audience. I, yeah, I've heard a lot of stories of Johnny Depp. He yes. goes around like that, and I love seeing oh, those videos. Incredible. The kids absolutely love that, <laughs> and I think it's great that he does so that. Special. I know a lot of celebrities like to yeah. do that as well. It's amazing. Just, it makes kids in the hospital feel that much better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We will be back with more news and weather today at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.